FameLab is a very interesting exercise because, because what you're actually challenging people to do is in just three minutes without uh, the, the aid of PowerPoint, for example, but just very simple props that they can carry onto the stage. With just raw talent, their voices, what they say, the, the way they use their bodies and so on. With just that, they, they, they are challenged to say something. It's going to make the audience go, wow, that was interesting. I enjoyed that, you know, and I've learned something. And that has to be good for science communication because it, it is challenging people to use raw skill. And if you can, if you can encourage uh, particularly early career scientists and others, I mean, FameLab is, is, is a competition that involves people for, at all stages of their careers. Uh, if you can encourage scientists to do this kind of thing, it is a tremendous uh, boost to science communication. Lots of scientists actually self-select to talk to computers <laughs> rather than to people. You know, it's just, it's, it, for many of them, it's a personality thing. Although I think for a lot of the people who come to FameLab, it's, uh, it, it, that's not the case. But scientists over years have not really been required to talk to the general public. Uh, and so it may well just be part of the, uh, the personality of, say, the average scientist that they don't particularly want to do this. Although, funnily enough, in FameLab, we're, we're finding so many people who, who are just desperate to communicate their science and, and spread uh, the, the stories of what they're doing much more widely. really do need to focus on your audience and think about the needs of your audience, what your audience really uh, wants from you. Um, if you've got a really strong image of the audience in your mind, you know, I suggest to people you pick somebody that's representative of the, of the kinds of people who might be in your audience. And you think, what would I say to them? What would interest them? What kind of language would they use? especially if they're non-scientists, that's, the, that's the important thing, then that really does help shape your message. That's the first thing. Um, I, we talk about body language. So I say don't forget that when you speak, um, your body is speaking as well. And so we do a whole load of stuff about body language, and taking body language seriously. And I suggest to uh, the fame labbers that they look at people who are giving talks and think about how, not only how they're structuring their talk and what they're saying, but how they deliver it. And think about what works and what doesn't work, because you can learn a great deal about your own body language from observing other people. Um, a good tip that I give, especially when talking about science to a general audience, is to say more about less. Um, that it's so easy to try and cram the audience's mind with lots and lots of different ideas. Uh, but I, I think it's really important to say more uh, about less. Um, and um, something which uh, I personally find very helpful is to break the talk up. You know, if you're talking for three minutes or for three hours, you can still break your talk up into small, much more manageable steps. Well, I call them stepping stones. And, and that's a top tip that I give to people. And there are lots more.